Yes. Welcome back to Infotainment on Liberated TV. We got a really good topic today. Hip hop. The current state of hip hop. Is there a problem with hip hop? Uh, we left off, Brother Q was talking about the unseen hand. And it just reminded me, uh, when I was, I guess in junior high, it was a group by the name of Public Enemy. They had an album called It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. This album did so much for me. It inspired me to go out and read about my culture, to learn about my key, uh, history. It inspired me to think outside of the box. So the question that I want to pose is, how did we get to a KRS-One when he was saying, you must learn to a soldier boy where he's making songs talking about, I got all else on my report card. So I told my teacher to throw some D's on it. I got any comments on that? Wow. Uh. Uh, that was a movie. See, this is, this is what needs to be looked at. That was, this was a movie. Uh, it's kind of like a mirror of the 60s, what we had with the 60s, uh, when everybody was on one accord, whether it was SCLC or SNCC or Black Panther Party or Nation Islam. They might have been doing, going about it different ways, but they were all doing the same thing. Well, hip-hop was, uh, to me, was a microcosm of that. It was doing the exact same thing. It was bringing us all together. It might have been different artists and different groups in there saying different things, but all of them were still trying to bring us here. There was a balance and there was some unity. So, of course, that understanding hand, again, looking at that, realized that, you know what, there's a resurgence of what was going on back in the 60s with this hip-hop movie. So, basically, COINTELPRO was reinvented to break down hip-hop, to do exactly to hip-hop what it did to the black movement in the 60s. You, know that you had um, X-Clan, um, BDP, you had um, Karis, all these people were they were unifying the masses, really. It was actually, the music then was reflecting what was going on in the street. Once they uh, divided uh, hip hop by creating a, um, a conflict between the coasts, East Coast and West Coast, I think that's, that's mm -hmm. after that, um, it all went downhill. People in power, uh, the so-called architects of the elitists of society, understand very clearly that in order to control a, a, the behavior of a population of people, a particular people, one of the most important things that you have to control is the culture of that people. Mm -hmm. And music is a big contributing factor to the culture. And when you look at hip hop, how the, the conscious resurgence of hip hop in the early 90s, you saw a certain revolutionary spirit, spirit which for those who are in power, the elitist, so-called, that will be very scary, mm -hmm. you know, so it will be in their best interest to control that. At one point in time, police brutality was in the media. It was one of the main issues that were being promoted, even though it's still a problem. It ain't right. went nowhere, just right. you don't hear about it as much. <laughs> so, but uh, <laughs> rappers would, were beginning to address this in their songs. You had rappers who were so fed up that they were talking about, okay, it's time to retaliate against the police for the actions in which they're doing it up to our communities. Yes. Uh, we cop killer and and you know NWA when they were saying you know f the police or whatnot. <laughs> Notice how quickly that message was killed. You know, in in fact, um, uh, I was looking at on television Tupac's manager. Uh, he was talking about Tupac was about to release a song about police brutality, mm -hmm. but Ice T was getting so much heat from the cop killer song mm -hmm. that they went into another direction, and that's mm -hmm. when you see the birth of the whole thug life and Tupac blew up. Yes, mm -hmm. so. When you had a message that, that those in power feel to be threatening, they, you know, quickly get rid of that message. But notice when we started talking about killing each other, it was embraced. Yeah. And you get it played on the radio over and over and over and over. And there's a whole psychology behind that. Everything starts from the starting place. Uh, Raz has said, um, I heard 50,000 drive-bys, 49,999 was live. Everybody just started regurgitating what everybody else was doing about the negativity. You know, so one guy, you know, maybe, and he was legitimate, maybe. That one guy probably came from the middle of South Central Los Angeles. Maybe his stories were real stories because he grew up maybe a cripple of blood. Maybe. And his mm -hmm. stories were real. When everybody said, hey, well, he sold, so now I'm going to say the same thing happened to me. And I'm going to say it. Mm -hmm. So now everybody became overnight gangster. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of what started to kill it, which led into what, you know, Nigel was saying about the whole East Coast, West Coast beef. Because once you have that internal beef within each other, which is what was caused, now this guy said, well, I'm going to be a bigger gangster than he was. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a bigger drug dealer than he was. So now it's easy to get the coast over here to say, I'm going to be bigger than them over there, and I'm going to be bigger than them over there. So 
as you always say, divide and conquer. Yeah. There's always been the tools that the oppressors use to keep us where they want us to be, and they're using they use that tool away with hip hop. They use the perfect.